Human Resources Ministry to launch e-wages system soon. Earthquake strikes off Indonesia's main Java island. Good afternoon, welcome to Updates at Noon. I'm Jessica Lee. The district of Basut Trungganu turned into a red zone yesterday after recording an increase of 24 COVID-19 positive cases for the Balao cluster, bringing the total number of cases in the cluster to 49. State Health Department Director Dr. Nor Azimi Yunus in a Facebook post said the cluster, which started in Kampong Balao in Basut, was triggered by the residents' fondness of meeting up for tea or coffee in coffee shops after prayers at the mosques and surouts and disregarding the set standard operating procedures or SOPs. Elaborating further, Dr. Nor Azmi said there is a possibility of a bigger cluster occurring in the Basut district due to the free movements of the high number of positive cases. There are currently 126 active COVID-19 cases in Trungganu, with the highest being in Basut 61, followed by Kuala Nerus 27, Kuala Trungganu 17, Dungun 13 and Marang 4, Setiu 2 and Hulu Trungganu 2. The Kampong Balao cluster, which was registered on the 6th of April, is a community cluster involving the districts of Basut and Marang in Trungganu and the Bachuk district in Kelantan. The index case for the cluster was a 62-year-old man who was reported COVID-19 positive on the 4th of April. A total of 945 individuals have been screened to date, including residents in two adjacent villages, namely Kampong PPRT Balao Baru and Kampong Kerwa. Now, the Human Resources Ministry will launch an e-wages system in the near future to ensure that all workers in the country, including foreign workers, are paid their salaries and wages as promised by the employers. Its Minister Datuk Sri M. Saravanan said his team had held a meeting with the Home Ministry to fine-tune the system, which was currently in the final stages, before it could be implemented. Commenting further on the matter, Dr. Sri Saravanan said, with the use of this system, it is expected to regulate employers who do not pay or are late in paying salaries to employees in all sectors, which is often an issue in the country. He said that the ministry will get early information if employers who are required to pay their employee salaries before the 7th of each month do not pay within the stipulated period. Raja Kementerian Semua Manusia sedang uh, memperalusi untuk memperkenalkan e-wages di mana uh, apabila kita mengamalkan e-wages dari segi dasar uh, Kementerian Dalam Negeri dah uh, memberi persetujuan kepada Kementerian Semua Manusia kita mengamalkan e-wages di mana apabila kita mengamalkan e-wages ni satu kawal selia di mana apabila majikan tak bayar gaji uh, SNG kita akan dapat makluman sebelum mereka buat aduan he said this when commenting on the allegations that there were employers who lodged reports to the Immigration Department to conduct raids on their foreign workers as a way to avoid paying their workers' salaries. Dr. Sri Saravanan also thanked the Home Ministry for agreeing to share the existing platform in the Ministry to get preliminary information on whether the employers had paid the employees' salaries before the employees themselves lodged a complaint. The Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries, or MAFI, is organizing a Young Agropreneur Program, or PAM, to provide basic exposure for youths who are keen to venture into agriculture. MAFI Deputy Minister 2, Dato Che Abdullah Matnawi, said the program is to provide fundamental skills to youths aged from 18 to 40 years old who are interested in making a career in agriculture. 
Gatuchi Abdullah said those interested can contact a nearby agriculture department to obtain information and advice. He also said that the program encompassed cultivation, livestock, fisheries, food industries, agrotourism and marketing. The minister who launched the Perlis Young Agropreneur Tour or JAM program at Hotel Sri Malaysia in Kanga Perlis yesterday also said the government has allocated 15 million ringgit to help 750 young entrepreneurs in the country under the Young Agripreneurs Grant or GAM scheme. Last year, he said 6,908 young agripreneurs nationwide received grants totaling 121.97 million ringgit. Afghanistan can be the golden gateway for Malaysian palm oil to be marketed in Central Asia, such as Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, as well as other countries in the region. The Ministry of Plantation Industries and Commodities, or MPIC, said the possibility was discussed by its minister, Datuk Dr. Muhammad Khairuddin Aman Razali, with the Afghanistan ambassador to Malaysia, Dr. Mohib Brahman Spinger, who paid a courtesy call on the ministry on Thursday. Datuk Dr. Kairudin said Afghanistan also welcomed the proposal to import more Malaysian palm oil and both sides agreed to explore the potential in expanding Malaysia's direct palm oil exports to Afghanistan, which currently stood at 75,000 tonnes a year to 150,000 tonnes a year. During the meeting, the two sides also discussed the potential to make Afghanistan a gateway for Malaysia's other agri-commodity exports such as rubber, pepper, cocoa and timber. Both parties agreed to sign a Memorandum of Understanding or MOU for the purpose soon. MPIC believed the understanding was reached because the world is confident of the premium quality of Malaysian palm oil and at the same time shows Sri Lanka's recent action to restrict imports of raw materials of the commodity will not affect the country's palm oil market but will open more new markets in other regions. Inspector General of Police Dan Sri Abdulhami Badur will be meeting Home Minister Dat Sri Hamza Zainuddin soon to proceed with the transfer of senior police officers, which has been postponed. Now, earlier, a Facebook posting which went viral yesterday stated the involvement of the Home Minister in the affairs of the Royal Malaysia Police or PDRM in the postponement. Command and control, yeah. Uh, kawal selia PDRM ini adalah tanggungjawab saya sebagai Ketua Bidang Negara. Dan saya telah pun mengeluarkan uh, arahan pertukaran tersebut untuk kebaikan semua. Uh, tidak ada apa-apa yang luar biasa. Ya? The IGP added that he had issued the transfer order for the good of all. At the same occasion, Tan Sri Abdul Hamid also called on the police force to empower the image of integrity of the uniform body. He said he was aware that there were grievances and scorn by the people on the question of integrity against the force lately. He further appealed and advised PDRM members who have deviated to return to the right path to uphold the good name of PDRM to its proper place. 24 individuals were slapped with a 5,000 ringgit compound each for violating the COVID-19 Standard Operating Procedures or SOPs during a raid at an entertainment centre in Jalan Yap Kwan Singh recently. The Dangwangi Police Chief ACP Muhammad Zainal Abdullah said in the 8.30pm raid, 24 individuals, including the owner of the outlet, Seven women, four Bangladeshi men and eight Thai women aged between 20 and 50 were also detained. Investigations found that the entertainment center, which is located in a hidden area and equipped with security and CCTV surveillance, only accepted regular customers. ACP Mama Zainal in a statement said the owner of the outlet was also issued a 25,000 ringgit compound under Regulation 11, Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases No. 4 Regulations 2021. In a separate case, Kajang Deputy Police Chief Superintendent Muhammad Sabri Abdullah said they were looking for a male driver of a Lexus car who fled a police roadblock mounted at the Kajang Toll Plaza yesterday. He urged the public with information on the man to come forward to assist in police investigations into the case. 
The case is being investigated under Section 42, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987 for driving recklessly and Section 186 of the Penal Code for preventing civil servants from carrying out their duties. The police busted four unlicensed money lending syndicates or Arlongs offering loans with high interest rates after detaining 29 individuals, including a woman, in a series of 12 raids in Pulau Pinang and Perak on Thursday. Bukit Aman Commercial Crime Investigation Department or JSJK Director Datuk Zainuddin Yaakob said that acting on information and intelligence, the Bukit Aman JSJK, in collaboration with the Pulau Pinang JSJK, raided 12 locations in Sebrang Prai Tengah and Sebrang Prai Utara and in Kurian Perak from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. before detaining the 29 people aged 21 to 54. As a result, Datuk Zainuddin said the police managed to bust four Arlong syndicates which offered illegal loans via online to borrowers, such as traders, government employees and those in the private sector nationwide. He said their modus operandi is to advertise money lending offers on social media applications such as Facebook, WeChat and WhatsApp, with the loan interest rate being 10 to 15 percent for a period of one week. He also said the syndicates would also contact borrowers who failed to repay the loans and offer them new loans to settle previous debts and in that way the victims would continue to be indebted to the lenders and would have to make multiple payments. He said the initial investigation found that the four syndicates had been carrying out such activities since 2017 and offered loans ranging from a thousand ringgit to millions of ringgit involving thousands of borrowers nationwide. Seized in the raids were 119 checks from various banks, 68 mobile phones, 27 bank cards, various loan documents, jewellery, 10 vehicles and cash amounting to 98,718 ringgit as well as a machete believed to be used to threaten borrowers. The members of Malaysia's 8th Infantry Brigade seized 61 kilograms of drugs believed to be shabu worth about 2.2 million ringgit and an illegal jetty on the bank of the Golok River in Rantau, Pahang, in Rantau Panjang, Kelantan recently. Commander of the 8th Brigade Brigadier General Abu Hassan Ashari Kamis said the seizure was carried out by an attack and arrest or circup group carrying out Ops Benteng Utara at the location at 8.45 p.m. Brigadier General Abu Hassan said the group members noticed a vehicle with three men on board had stopped at an illegal jetty during the operation. He also said that they also kept track of the movement of a boat coming in from the direction of Thailand. Subsequently, the circuit members saw the three men carrying a gunny sack from the boat and loading it into their vehicle. Now, Seeing this, they conducted a raid but the three men escaped towards Thailand via the river. The Sarkar members inspected the black gunny sack in the vehicle and found 61 tea packets estimated to weigh one kilogram suspected to contain Shabu. Other than Shabu, a luxury Toyota Velfire car, which is estimated to cost 150,000 ringgit, was also seized. In local sports action, national women's hammer thrower Grace Wong Siu Mei smashed a national record with a 62.48 metres throw at the Malaysia Open Athletics Grand Prix or GP Championships at the National Sports Council MSN Mini Stadium in Bukit Jalil yesterday. Grace erased her own record of 60.99 metres created in Mokpo, South Korea in 2017. The Sarawak-born athlete trounced the competition with Nurul Hidayah Lukman from Selangor finishing a distant second with 49.98 metres, while Aang Mei Sin Winnie from Kuala Lumpur with a throw of 17.95 metres came in third. The 20-year-old athlete did not expect to break the national record after almost a year out of competitive action. Her last stint was during the 2019 SEA Games in Manila, Philippines, where she failed to defend her gold at the 2017 SEA Games in Kuala Lumpur, coming in second to Mingkamon Kompun from Thailand. 
Meanwhile, Muhammad Ashad Muhammad Saad of Johor created an upset when he won the men's 100 meters event. The Johor sprinter clocked 10.64 seconds to push Sarawak's national athlete Jonathan Naper, who clocked 10.7 seconds into second spot. Muhammad Azim Muhammad Fami of Perak came in third in 10.85 seconds. Not only was the 18-year-old Muhammad Asha delighted with his victory, he was also surprised to have betted his personal best of 10.70 seconds, which he clocked at the Malaysian School Sports Council or MSSC meet in 2019. Muhammad Ashad, who trains under Muhammad Poat Muhammad Kasim, who used to coach 2017 SEA Games gold medalist Kairul Hafiz Jantan, hopes to make the squad for this year's Hanoi SEA Games in Vietnam from the 21st of November until the 2nd of December. And moving on to local football, three goals in the opening half was all defending champions Johor Darul Takzim or JDT needed to down Petaling Jaya or PJ City FC 3-0 at the Sultan Ibrahim Stadium in Iskandar Putri last night and extend their lead in the Super League standings to a comfortable four points. Coach Benjamin Mora's men notched their sixth win of the season thanks to two goals by Brazilian import Bergson da Silva and one by Argentine Gonzalo Cabrera to maintain their unbeaten run for the season. Playing on their home ground, JDT began in style when an unmarked Cabrera not at home as early as in the first minute. Bergson then stole the show with a brace. His first was with a left-footed drive from outside the box in the 20th minute and his second 10 minutes later was a tap in with his right foot he has now scored eight goals so far this season jdt now have 20 points from eight matches while second place kadah daro aman fc have 16 points followed by trungano fc on 15 points over at the Kuala Lumpur Football Stadium in Cheras, Kuala Lumpur City FC recorded their second win of the season after edging second from bottom Sri Pahang FC 2-1 thanks to a goal in each half by Paolo Josui in the 18th minute and Daniel Ting's maiden strike in the 70th minute. The Elephants pulled one back in second half injury time, but it was simply a case of too little, too late. With the win, Boyan Hodak's side are now fifth in the Super League standings with 12 points from three wins, three draws and two losses. Meanwhile, last season's Super League top scorer Ifadeo Olusegun exploded with a hat-trick to inspire Selangor FC to a 3-1 win over traditional rivals Perak FC at the MBPJ Stadium. Ifadeo opened accounts for the Red Giants in the seventh minute. It was his third goal of the season. In the 29th minute, Selangor earned a penalty after Oliver Buff was fouled by Perak's Leandro Dos Santos. Ifadeo stepped up and converted from the spot before completing his hat-trick in the 71st minute. The boss Garo scored a constellation goal through substitute Mohamed Farid Kazali in second half injury time in his attempt to reduce deficit for Pera. However, it was too little too late. For coach Karsten Nitzel, the win also buys him more time as rumours are already circulating that he could be replaced soon due to Selangor's erratic form. And that's it from us this afternoon in our top story, Human Resources Ministry to launch e-wages system soon. Join us again at 10pm on Saluran Brita RTM on my Freeviews channel 123. And you can also stream the link via YouTube or RTM Click web portal and mobile app. Till then, I'm Jessica Lee. Stay tuned and have a pleasant afternoon.